Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage, and today's car is the Lamborghini Aventador S you see behind me. Now, I first drove a Lamborghini Aventador on its world premiere launch, which was way back in April 2011. Can't believe it's that long ago now, over seven years. And that was down in Rome, and they gave us the circuit Vallelunga. And what struck me about the Aventador back then was how much was new on the car. This was almost a clean sheet design, new engine, new carbon tub, all sorts of things. Anyway, we were doing that Lamborghini Espada tour a few weeks ago. One of the chase cars there was the Aventador S in a khaki green with gold wheels and it looked terrific. And I thought it's high time I revisited it. And I know we've got the SVJ now just launched, but there's something super clean look about the S and Lamborghini tell me they did some of the redesign was very much um, looking, harking back to the Lamborghini Countach. So I've got my Countach out so we can look at the pair together. Come on, let's go and have a closer look. Now there aren't many cars that can upstage a Lamborghini Countach in terms of design, but the Aventador I think gets very close, especially in this new S format, well not that new, it came out in 2017, but they did a wonderful redesign, a little uh, bit of hurricane sort of magic went onto the Aventador and it had this new front, rather than having the sort of two gaping grills either side um, where the um, front of the front wheels, it had this flash of colour, this sort of spoiler um, stepped uh, under the number plate and these shark teeth sort of just pointing down either side. Oh, I think it really worked on the car. Gave it a more aggressive front, super low, and those sort of shark-like eyes as well. Along the side, it's still that very sharp. Uh, we look along the door, how sharp that looks, and that shadow that going to the rear, and then it bleeds out on the top of the wing. It's full of details, this thing. And where they say the Countach inspiration came was just these these tops of um, cooling tops up here you see it, it sort of changed there if you look at the uh, Countach because the the radiators are sort of vertical it has these pods that scoop air in there we go scoop air in on the top and that's the sort of look they wanted for the Aventador and that's what changed with the S the other slight change is the rear wheel arch where they sort of elongated at the front to give it the sort of Countach Gandini look, this sort of slash different, not rather than having a round wheel arch, has this forward edge, gives it more aggression. Really good. And again, that apes what the Countach has as well. In comparison to the Aventador, it's amazing how simple uh, the Countach looks. But the one thing they do share is this sort of clean look. I've taken the rear spoiler off again, Mike, because I've always liked the way you can see how it, it's, it's not parallel at the side, how it widens as it comes down to those crazy rear lights. I think you just, you just see more of the design of the actual base car with the wing removed. That's why it's going to stay off for a while. Um, I have wing off and wing on moments, but at the moment it's definitely a wing off is i just think the purity of the design shines through on the Countach and that's why i like this Aventador S and this clean look without the rear spoiler that the SV and the SVJ have just think it shows off the wonderful design underneath it's what you want a supercar to be the Aventador S has 20 inch front wheels and 21 at the rear 255 at the front and then 355 25 21 inch uh, at the rear Finally, it actually has tyres, carries tyres bigger than the Countach. Always, when the Aventador foot came out, it was 335s, and the Countach has 345 size tyres, just these monster, very famous P7 tyres. But nope, the Aventador has finally earthed that, and it carries a 355 tyre as standard. There's design details all over this car, but I do love the Lamborghini Aventador mirror. This, we first saw it on the uh, Gallardo, this sort of forward... Um, reaching and then this very angular look really suits it door comes along here there's a door handle here which you open the door and there's the other party piece of the event door of course is the scissor doors um, they don't quite go up like the Countach uh, they don't go vertically up they go up at a slight angle uh, an engineer told me that was because it was a frameless window to get it to seal it had to just come out and then go back down. The eagle-eyed among you will might notice there's two door handles on an event door. There's another one here um, which you just take off and then that's if your battery goes flat and you can't get the door open then there's a key there and there's a lever and you can open your door like that. Right let's have a look under the front. Okay the front lifts up and there's a pretty decent space in here. It goes, it's really deep quite um, wide as well. In fact, it's big enough to fit a photographer in. If you ask a uh, photographer at Evo, Dean Smith, he did some fantastic shots of my Countach from the front of the Ventador by sitting in there. 
What they don't tell you at Lamborghini, though, is this uh, boot will go right up like this, and it goes nice and vertical as you can get in. The downside is, if you have a wet uh, body and left it been out in the rain, then all the water shoots off and fills up this space here, which isn't quite so clever. Also has the uh, coding of the paint on this. This is um, Viola. Um, it's a Viola 30. It was a, it was a colour Lamborghini introduced on the SE30, this uh, Lamborghini Diablo to celebrate 30 years of Lamborghini. And here it is again on this 2018 Aventador. To get into the back, have a look at the engine. Then there's a little lever behind the seat here and that lifts the engine lid. It's very awkward to get in here. You can only have to do it on the electric seats, um, which is a really slow way of doing it. As you can see, they're not very keen on moving. Okay, engine cover lifts up, leaves this behind because that's the rear spoiler. Hiding under here is the exhaust. It is normally super hot. This is the um, dipstick here because this is the oil reservoir. The V12 on the Aventador is dry sumped. So it has a separate oil reservoir. That makes the engine really low. You can fit it much lower in there. And it's also better for racing, etc. And the next big surprise are these horizontal um, spring damper units. This is because it's push rod suspension on the back of the Aventador. Super race um, craft, really. Rare to see on a road car, but great to see and it's such a mighty engine this um, normally aspirated v12 six and a half liter and 730 horsepower revs to eight and a half thousand rpm when you go out on the road we'll just see how spectacular it is so anyway let's take it out for a drive now first thing you've met as you get in is a Ventador on the sill. Scissor doors, I've, I mean, I've lived with them on the Countach for a while now. They actually work really well because you can park, uh, when people park close to you, you can always get out and in, you know, in storage, it, it's terrific. Um, you just gotta have the roof space to have the doors go all the way up. Um, first thing you find when you get in an Aventador is, so you just carry your phone, you want to put your phone somewhere or your sunglasses somewhere and you suddenly realize there is nowhere in this car to put them. Um, center console is solid. There's no sort of bags underneath here. There's a little tiny thing here at the back that's got a USB charger and a, um, and a cigarette lighter, but it doesn't actually close if you put your phone in it. So you're sort of thinking, oh, where do I put anything? There's nothing in the door. The glove box is too far away from the driver. So yeah, storage is a bit of an issue in the Aventador. Um, so yeah, practical uh, points for a what car award? No, nah, we're not gonna get them. You start up, first thing you see is this, it starts up in an auto mode and the gearbox. You can't help uh, when you're um, driving or discussing an Aventador to talk about its gearbox because it's a single plate automated clutch. It's transverse at the back. It's a very clever gearbox. It's packaged very um, neatly, uh, but it is a bit of its Achilles heel. Move off, you touch one paddle and away you go. And it starts off in an auto mode as they all do, but it's very keen to change up. I'm doing 10 miles an hour, uh, 60 miles an hour, it's into third and at 20, I'm in fourth already. And it, I, when I discuss it with the engineers, what's that all about? And it's the dreaded CO2. There you go, it's got stop start as well. Let's see if I can just uh, turn the fan down a bit. There we go. Um, yeah, stop start on this car as well. Everything it can do um, to help out to get reverse. You do this. Don't know why this car thinks there's something approaching all the time on the front when there isn't. You get a camera on the back, um, which works really well in a car like this. Uh, really handy. Obviously, it's really wide, etc. So yeah, your first your first pointers on the Aventador is this weird clutch and this weird gearbox, and it's a constant reminder that it's not quite right on the gearbox. Such a shame. So the first thing you do on an Aventador is press the M for manual. And then, it, then you're sort of fine. And then you just got an automated manual as you expect. And uh, as we go out of the village and get on some better roads, I'll just show you some more details. But the gearbox is so much better in manual. It's no way is it perfect, um, but it's in automatic um, format. It's a disaster. surprise with 
events at all when you go down a road like this is it rides okay somehow since the launch of initial, the first generation of Ventador they fitted um, this trick dampers on it and um, they work a treat. This is the roughest bit of road anyway in a 10 mile radius and this Aventador should be terrible down here but it's not. Uh, it's quite remarkably well, um, it rides really quite well. Other oddities in the cabin, well for some reason you've got a compass um, sort of digital compass reading out of the rear view mirror. No idea why, I, I need to know I'm heading west. And it catches your eye, you think, what's that red red light in the mirror? So, yeah, a bit odd. And then you pick up that you've got seriously offset pedals in an event door. It's, it's, the accelerator is precisely where you'd expect to find the brake. And where the accelerator is, well, there's a wheel arch. Um, it's part of this sort of carbon fibre tub. It's super strong, but it does really come in on a um, right-hand drive car. There's a, not a lot of space. The other thing that's changed, there's a number of things that did change on S when they introduced the S. Biggie rear wheel steer just means the rear wheels move about three degrees maximum up to about 80 miles an hour. This is in its calmest mode, by the way. This is in Strada. This is normal as you can get for road. There's still that little B12 uh, voice coming through. We've got more aggressive modes. Anyway, so rear wheel steer, that helps um, you know, hide the bulk of the car and the size of the car. There's no getting away from it. It's a big car, the Aventador. Um, and then it introduced this programmable Eco, terrible name on your um, driver um, system. So you have sport, more aggressive throttle, more aggressive heavier steering, um, quicker uh, gear change. Corsa is the crazy mode for on track. And Eco allows me to choose, cherry pick the great, the best elements and make my own setting up. You see it on all sorts of cars now, but on the first generation of Ventador, you had to get just what Lamborghini gave you. Much better having a, a programmer system like that. You will also pick up lots of road noise. So you're probably all going to complain you can't hear me. Well, I'm sorry, I'll just keep testing these carbon tubbed cars at the moment. And uh, they do create a drum inside, as you can now hear. Well, this, this road was um, graveled in the, in the winter. Well, well few, no, not the winter, in the autumn. So you can pick, pick up that sound. We'll get on to smooth and tarmac in the middle. But it does mean there's constant road noise. Something about carbon fiber cars, it's a characteristic of it. I used to have it in the Zonda, you notice it in McLarens and all sorts of cars. What else is there? Yeah, it just dominates this central color, this central um, console. And it ages it as well because it's quite an early generation sort of Audi um, window there with the navigation and all the um, driver um, information, car information, radio, etc. It sort of dates the car uh, back to the 2010-2011 period. It's such a shame. They have changed the dash and as we go through the systems you'll see that radically change. Visibility is a bit odd as well. It's such a deep windscreen. I, if I, if it misted up, then I can, well, I can get about a foot into the window, and that's it. There's another two or three foot all the way down there that I can't actually reach from here. It's miles away. Uh, I can just see the white blaze. I have no idea where the front body. I just see a little edge there, and that's it. Um, in the Kuntat, it's much more open. It's much deeper the view out. Uh, but it is the characteristic of the Aventador. So it's sort of part and parcel. It's intimidating if you haven't driven an Aventador of this sort of car before. It also sort of makes it, um, rather than the McLaren or um, that gives you a sort of goldfish bowl uh, view out, this is very definitely focused straight ahead. Um, those those A pillars are super imposing. It's even got these funny little triangle glass in front of the door before you get to the windscreen. But all of that is forgiven by the looks. It's 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 joyous when you, when you, you drive around this. It's the same with the Kuntash. You see 
people smile. You see 10 year olds jump up and down. Might not have the same effect when you're in central London at uh, 11 o'clock and there's someone revving the nuts of it. But bring it to the home counties, little quiet Cotswold town like this, and people just smile. People let you out. And, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's sculpture on the road going past you. Something you don't see every day. That's one bit that Lamborghini are really good at. And having lived with it a few days, well, uh, the surprises are the, the wipers work very well. Um, it demists in an instant. I've even got heated seats now, which are very nice. Um, so all that sort of stuff works pretty well. Um, what doesn't work quite so well is actually the headlights. Um, they're a round stalk and they're low. You've got the, the um, chain uh, paddles here, but then the, the, the wiper, control the wiper and lights, they've put the stalks right lower than they should be and they're not in a natural place you're always thumbling to find them and you've quite often you want to go ahead uh, full beam or back to dip beam and the indicators are going because it's sort of round and your hand doesn't hit it right minor stuff really but um, has to be commented on I'd say fairly straightforward layout as well that I love the way the start button hides under a, um, a red cap looks looks terrific Part reverse manual all done by press buttons here. The other nice surprise, the gearbox always does what it's told. Um, it's never missed reverse, um, going to manual, it, it all feels normal. Just keep it out of auto. Just toggle through these things. So, yes, sport, first one, Corsa changes the dash. You get this readout, um, revs along the top, speedo is down the bottom right. Going to ego because then I can just soften off the um, damping suspension, it just rides fairly normally. Um, that's my favorite mode. Um, the stop start no longer functions, nor does uh, there's a funny little symbol I've noticed when I'm drifting through town that it shows which bank of cylinders it will cut off six cylinders and um, just run on on the left hand bank or the right hand bank and you even get a little symbol on the dash it looks like the piston head symbol but when you've got the left bank working or the right bank working um, alternates once they cool down it swaps over uh, so they doesn't lose too much temperature on the bank that isn't actually functioning here we are drifting around third we've got more aggressive um, gear changes i've got coarser gear changes i'm in second i'm at 4000 rpm let's see what happens Just a characteristic of Entendor. There is no gear change like it. Everybody tries to smooth it over or make it super rapid. It's 50 millisecond change, so we're seriously quick gear change, but boy does it thump it in. Feels like a gearbox breaker, but six years on, no one speaks about gearboxes breaking in their Entendor, so it, it must be fine. But it does define this car. Up to my usual bit of road. This is where an Aventador of old really wouldn't have worked very well. So here we go. Let's do a standing start away from this junction. All quiet, nobody around. Here we go. Whoa. Just like my Kuntash, it really surprises with its top end punch. Um, we got used to turbo engines. These engines, these V12 engines, need celebrating. They're not with us for much longer, unfortunately. The Brussels and the CO2 uh, laws are to be obeyed. These sort of engines need an electric assistance. They do all they can't rev by the look of things, all sorts of things. So. Real, um, this is the pinnacle of normally aspirated engines in my view. Um, it's just the way it delivers more and more as the revs rise. That's what 
got us hooked on normally aspirated engines and the engine in the Aventador is one of the very very best. The other thing is, again, this is super bumpy and I'm not feeling it. I'm really surprised at the difference in damping between um, first generation Aventador and this latest Aventador S. It just sounds terrific, it's little pops and bangs and the other thing. It feels sharper but it does feel, the steering does feel like an electric hell. Um, there's no doubt about electrical assistance, they've tried to add weight etc. It's not again, it's star turn. What I do like is how adjustable it is and I've been able to pull the um, cotton right out. And it's a perfect position and the paddles, although they're a bit sharp, a bit odd, spidery things, they work a treat. Driving like this, I am not complaining about the single plate clutch. Yes, um, a dual clutch transmission would be punchier and it wouldn't have that shock factor in between the gears, that thump. Um, I say that would destroy the Aventador character. And if you want to go really quickly down a road like this, well, that's fine. Lamborghini will just sell you a Huracan Performante. Much more damage than this, but for a big boss. Lamborghini, my goodness, this is still a hell of a ride and dramatically better than the first generation. Although when I took it on track, that first drive, I was astonished to buy it on track because you never took a, you know, a Mercilago or Diablo on track was just a chopping nightmare. You either ran out of brakes, ran out of talent, or you just ran out of tyre barriers to hit. Not so when the Aventador was launched, suddenly of this car that stayed on track, that thumped down the straights were a wonderful V12. Yes, it, the setup, initial setup was understeering. I didn't care. I, I got to enjoy a, a V12 Lamborghini on track like I've never enjoyed before. Another thing that's not quite good enough for the Aventador were the seats. They're not, they're not actually uncomfortable, but they're just a bit forgettable. They've got no real shoulder support. Um, they're electrically assisted, they just, well, could do better. And they, oh, they're such a dynamic car like this, well, I didn't expect better. The SV came with sort of carbon seats, the, the Alcantara, so they were just sort of grippier. These were just the Ventador, just feel like they've nabbed them from some ordinary car tucked round the back. One thing I do like, I've got sun visors. Don't get sun visors and a kuntash. And then out of the rear, as you're driving along, you get up a certain speed and now the wing I can see has popped up um, and it disappears again as soon as we come to a halt. A bit like you see on Porsches and things like that. It's the same on the Aventador. And I'm not grounding out. I'm, I'm so, this car runs pretty damn low. It's got a very efficient um, lift at the front that soon jacks it up hydraulically operating and bangs it down again. But actually, I should be grounding out on this road and I'm not, so that's impressive too. Yeah, real surprise, uh, nice surprise this Aventador S. Yes, it's flawed, but my goodness, it's quite something. And I actually give, give them my son Charlie a call because I want to see it next to the Kuntash. I want to see these two cars side by side going down a road like this. That's quite a sight. Just magic seeing these two cars together. Just seeing the Kuntash in the mirror behind the slats here in this V12. This, there's something that about Lamborghini it brings the 10 year old out in you and that's what it's about it's that pin-up car for each generation Charlie's got it for the Aventador I've got it for the Countach and uh, Lamborghini have been the masters at it for what getting on just over 50 years now it's crazy to think that Countach probably well I could I could buy a new Aventador S and pocket a hundred thousand pounds but crazy how values have gone of cars. Which is the better car? Is that a good idea? Well, I don't know. It's, it's the trouble with it is that's the car I always dreamed of owning. The Aventador. I would quite like one of these. Secretly be told. But it's the legend of the Countach. It's why it's worth a hundred thousand more. And also, I suppose there's five thousand of these, and there's two thousand Countaches, but only forty-two or thereabouts right-hand drive QBs. 
so yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful problem to have. Both would suit me very well. I sort of like extreme cars, and they don't come more extreme than this. I once asked Ferrari why they didn't do a V12 model, and they just said it would. They obviously do the La Ferrari in the specials, but they don't have a regular uh, V12 in the rain mid-engine. And they said, well, it's just so hard to beat the V8 mid-engine car that you'd have to go so crazy to beat the performance of that. And that's sort of where Lamborghini are. The Performante, you know, Huracan Performante is just an amazing, it's a, just a nutty, crazy car. It's got the race pedigree and, the, and it's got the Nürburgring's type. SVJ places this one back on top. But really, the Aventador is about the looks, the noise and the drama. And there's plenty of that. And there isn't really another car out there. And I've been lucky enough to own Zondas and I've you know, driven Koenigsegg, etc. To anybody who's thinking about a really wild mid-engine car, statement car, this is the one to beat. As I said before, it has some flaws. But every Lamborghini supercar always has throughout time since they first appeared. Try to drive a, a Mura hard and you'll find that had flaws. The Countach is flawed, the driving position, um, heavy gear change, heavy brakes, heavy clutch. But what they all deliver is spectacular looks, spectacular drive, sound, etc. Just the experience. And that's why I love Lamborghini and I love this Aventador S. So there you go, there's a bit of background. Hope you enjoyed this video.